Rumix Soft, patch not for sale. Interesting company name. Oh, but what we have here, everyone, is Rambo 1 half, Hard Battle 2, Super Move Hustle for the English, Super Move Hustle, Super Move Hustle for the English translation patch, also known as Chogi Ranbu Hen. It is the third of the Rambo 1 half fighting games for Super NES, and the one that the US did not get for various reasons. Don't, don't know if there was no interest or Fumiko Takahashi did not approve. It's just unknown. Fortunately, there was an English patch available, and even without it, it's it's pretty easy to figure out. Anyway, let's jump into the options. So the game level, we have uh, one, two, or three. I'm going to be playing on one. It's, uh, it's a decent challenge in and of itself, even on the lowest difficulty. Some characters are better than others. Time limit, I'm just going to put it infinite. So I, want to, I want to try and showcase a few things and don't have to worry about the time limit. Uh, sound, music, all that set. Uh, versus mode, you can have, we can have the CPU fight each other. We're not going to worry about that. For controls, you only have four attack buttons. So basically weak and strong punch and kick. And the secret skill and very sensitive... Very sensitive controls here. So if you turn that on, that just sets the R button as a as a, a special move shortcut for your character. Handy to have, for the most part, because especially if there's a character who has a charge move that's tied to. Most of the time, you'll be fine without it. Go ahead and turn that on. And bring that in. So if you if you just leave the title screen running, you'll go to a demo battle. The story mode has all the story. Of course, along with story mode, you have tag match and versus battle, which we I won't be showing. I may do some bonus videos if uh, people in the CGP server are interested in trying this out and versus mode later on. But again, that'll be a bonus video. Now let's go ahead and jump into the story mode. So in our character select screen, we have 12 available characters. Technically 11, because you have both Rama Akuna and Ranma Chan. They are counted as two separate characters. They play mechanically differently. Otherwise, you have Mariko, Ukyo, Moose, Padachi, Genma, Shampoo, Ryoga, Akane, Tatewaki, and Hinako Sensei. Uh, I'm going to be playing through them in mostly random order. For the most part, let's start with Rama, because he's the main character. One day, a letter arrives a letter arrives from that man, and I just, I just can't get my tongue untwisted right now. <laughs> you have been selected to receive a golden opportunity. Wow, spam mail of the 90s. A splendid recipe passed down for over 4,000 years. A magnificent recipe that is coveted as the supreme treasure of the Musk dynasty. The Musk arc is, is in the manga only. I'll cover. I'll talk about that a little bit more. That impressive secret recipe now passes to you! With only 12 ingredients, you can fashion a golden beckoning cat that will grant your fondest wish. Now please, go seek out the ingredients with haste. Kashiko. The beckoning cat of the Musk dynasty? My fondest wish granted, huh? Yahoo! Now I'll be rid of this cursed body! No, now's not the time to celebrate. I gotta leave quietly so no one finds out. Ranma creeps, creeps away qu secretly. However, the letter isn't delivered to Ranma alone. Ranma's rivals also disperse across the globe, each hoping they are the one that collects the treasure of the Musk Dynasty. Oh, first up, I guess Moose. It's random who you fight throughout the whole game, but each character has their own individual stage, kind of uh, going throughout the whole world here. Entering New York. So Ranma is mostly a close range fighter, but he has a couple moves that lets him get in close. Up, and I just get uh, just get hit right there. Oh, yep, I'm getting my butt kicked already here. But like I said, even even an easy difficulty, you're tricky on here. I'm gonna showcase some of the moves here. I I did the rolling miss, the rolling kick kind of. Up, and I got grabbed right after he did that. Trying to. Okay, so quarter circle forward is Rama's uh, trademark move, the Moko Takabishen. Kind of, he, used, he turns his pride into a fireball is the best way to put it. I'm just trying to get him, trying to get an anti-air attack, but unfortunately. Yeah, that one-two kick's always nice. Go ahead and with that. Now each character has a taunt and a super move. To use the super move, you have to get a taunt out and then not take a hit. And use the super move without using anything else. Uh, Ramos is very easily done if you can hit a character with an anti-air attack and just knock them away. Let's go ahead and showcase some of the other moves, and I just jumped into the same thing again twice. Yeah, Ramos has a little dive kick, which is eh, not too good. Helps close things in a little bit. I just get keep getting grabbed there. Yep, go ahead and get that. Also, Ramos' other move is a nice anti-air attack, the Hiryu... Uh, Hold on. Ah, no, I'm just trying to get in. It's uh, not bad for anti-air, but doesn't have a lot of range. Leaves him open. Trying to 
Yeah, Moose is actually one of the harder enemies to fight because he's got good counters. Even though he's fairly slow, he's a good mid-range fighter. Rama! Oh, come on. I got I got under that. Here we go. I'm trying to I'm trying to I'm trying to bait him into an attack here. So I can use my taunt and super, finish him off. Oh. And oh, I'm still alive, still alive. Come on. We're just uh Kind of hitting each other here. Come on, jump at me. Up, oh, <laughs> darn! <laughs> I was trying to throw him. I was pushing the wrong button. Of course, I should lose a round with everybody just to see their expressions. The, the graphics on this game are really good for the time. All right, so do not uh, jump straight into his attack. Also, look at the layering on this. This is very impressive for SNES era. There we go. So I got the I got the taunt off and quickly down up for a, a hard punch. We'll uh, use Ramos Hiryu Korin Don, which uh, is actually quite tied to this game. A bit matters. So yeah, once I got that off, <laughs> I was able to kick his butt. So that's all his uh, special moves and super moves. So I'm just going to be focused on. On uh, play through the game. Of course, like any like any SNES fighting game, you got the post battle conversation. All right, Tate Wakikuno, a character who I absolutely loathe. He he is he's the kind of character who is just always entitled to think he gets he can get all the women just because he's rich and admittedly good looking, but unfortunately, just never never learns. Or see, it's mostly focused on uh, uh, short movements, based on, of course, uh, uh, Kendo. Oh, I always got the double hit in. That's okay. He's got a decent anti-air attack, despite that. No, uh, uh, no real good projectile. I'm gonna try and grab him. Oh, oh good. Let's see where Niger falls. Of course, even if even if I don't lose as a character, I'll beat them. I'll beat this character as another character. Doesn't really matter when it happens, it will. Oh, jump right over him. Counter. What if I can what if I can get under him with his with the with the rolling kick? Yep. Not enough anti-air there. He's not gonna jump a whole lot. All right, good. Got the counter. Yeah, that's a double hit. Don't want to. There we go. Got got the kick in. Uh, not, not the kick, the throw. You basically have to hold back and press hard punch when you're up against them to uh, to do a throw. It's easier said than done. And got the counter. You're down. Don't get back up. Yeah, Kuno was one of the character, one of the few characters who's present in all the fighting games. Right, same statement. Ah, the other Kuno, Kodachi. Uh, she is a nuisance. She likes to spam her projectile attacks. Also has a decent anti-air, so she can be tricky. But I always like I always like to uh, jump in with a hard kick and then do a sweeping kick to knock him back. That's kind of <laughs> kind of my uh, kind of my trademark on fighting games. Yep, should have done a punch there. Yeah, if you try to taunt, she will counter with her clubs. We go. Yeah, just close in and do that. Up, oh, come on. Ow. Yeah, she is. A, she's a fairly decent uh, range fighter. Can't keep you back if you're not careful. Double hit. And with that, and throw down. Booyah! Of course, we are outside the Taj Mahal here. We're just uh. This is just an excuse to go around the world and see these locations to gather ingredients. That's all it is. Of course, the one thing you want to do is never let a character get their super move off on you. However, if they taunt, especially with Ranma, it's easy to counter them. That is a homing attack. Up. Oh, well, she decided to break out of that. Because you can break out. You can break out of the taunts. Up. Oh. Up. Oh, yep. She's got the Ojo laugh. And uh, trying to close in on her here. Oh, 
Nope, there are no iframes on that at rolling kick. Of course, that is actually the Zenden Misaider Kiku. I think rolling missile kick is the full translation. I may be wrong on Zenden. Unfortunately, cannot counter. Oh, I haven't, I haven't shown uh, one of Rama's last moves. Katsu Tenshi na Magari Ken. It's the rapid fire punch. Chestnuts roasting on the open fire is the uh, literal translation. Simply because it's meant to ooh, train the character's speed. Just take a bunch of chestnuts out of a roasting fire without getting hurt. Hey, it says something different. All right, Akane. Or Akane, depending on if you're pronouncing it correctly or not. And this looks like, uh, I say Rome. Akane is uh, an interesting character. I, I, I like the character. I hate what uh, Takahashi did with her. Oh, she got me before I got her. But then again, that's that's kind of my uh, that's kind of my beef with the whole cast. I like a lot of the characters. I hate what happened to them in canon. I really feel like a lot of them got screwed over. Yeah, Akane is a very close range fighter. <laughs> and there's the face. They got her hair color a little too light in this one. That's that's just my opinion. Actually, yeah, I'll I'll point this out. Because I think if uh, they'd swapped Akane and Ukyo's hair colors, they'd look a lot better. Ooh, dignified. Oh. And I pushed the wrong button. <laughs> yeah, she does have that charging hammer attack. Oh, she used my own, she used my own combo against me. Up. Oh. <laughs> Up. Oh, not quite. Yeah, Rambo's diving kick is not very good in this form. It's a lot better in his female form because she has a double jump. Alright. Yeah, the Hiryu Shotenha is incredibly broken because it takes a lot of setup in the manga, but in the anime, but nope, in this, he just pulls it out whenever. Even more broken in the PS1 fighter. Alright, Mariko, probably the hardest character to fight in the game. She knows how to keep you away. I don't remember if she appears in the anime at all, but she's basically martial arts uh, uh, cheerleading. You can, you can probably say this is somewhere in the U.S. Given it is American football. But yeah, I do not want to let her uh, knock me across the screen because she will manage to keep me back. Whew. Yeah, I say she's one of the hardest. I'd take her down in seconds. Yeah, for such a minor character to appear in this game, that's uh, actually pretty surprising. But then again... There weren't a whole lot of major characters left when you get most of the main cast in. Uh, Penny Hostaro actually shows up in the second fighting game. He was, would have made a bit more sense, but he's actually the final boss in that one. And kind of overpowered, given given his situation. But in one, in the other sense, I'm glad Hafosai is not in this one. He's also in the previous one. Probably the worst character in the franchise, believe it or not. <laughs> Even worse than Kuno. Yeah, some of the character uh, depictions in this have not aged well at all. Yep, uh, and despite my ranting, that uh, went pretty quick. Yeah, like I said, there's Ukyo. Doesn't quite look like her because of the hair color. Swap her and Akane's, and it would look a lot better. So this is this looks yeah this is this is this is Scotland. This is Loch Ness monster in the back there. Nice little touch. Oh, you dizzy? Even better. Look at that damage. Sorry, John, you're my favorite, but you're also my opponent. <laughs> Just like the girls at the dock, just kind of sitting there watching. <laughs> There's the phase. Actually, if I could, uh, if I could hack. I would probably swap their hair colors if possible. I don't know if the, if they're limited by their color palettes, but yeah, that's just one thing that like bugged me. But like I said, this is the third of the Rambo and Half fighting games, or SNES. The first one got localized in the U.S. as Street Combat. It is a piece of garbage. The, the 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 game itself is decent enough, but the localization is just so terrible that uh, <laughs> it's just painful to watch. You played the U.S. version. They they did, they turned they changed it from a Remo and Half game into something entirely generic. The second one, Remo and Half Hard Battle, has a larger roster, and 
was localized in the U.S., but has some of the worst voice acting you'll ever hear. <laughs> it plays okay if you can get if you can get over that. <laughs> Yep, doesn't matter who he's up against. Rama will taunt. Okay, Genma, the last of the three characters I absolutely loathe in this in this series. He is the grappler of the of the cast, so just kind of try and keep him away. We'll say stuck in his panda form the whole time. <laughs> oh, they they localize his sign too, just to say ah. <laughs> and yeah, this looks like the rainforest. So if Blanca shows up, we're playing the wrong game. Oh, nice counter. I've yet to get a single perfect, but that's okay. I'm not going for score. Nice counter. Let's keep him cornered. He dead. Hey, nice score. Ooh, perfect. Jumped right into it. Nope! Oh, I I pushed R instead of the hard punch again. Yep, he's got he's got that attack to close in, in distance. Uh, f more reliable than Kuno and Akane's. Up, oh, nope, didn't get off in time. There we go. And bam! <laughs> ah, parental abuse never felt so good. Given as Genma, if you know you know, if you know his backstory, he deserves everything. Hey, unique statement. <laughs> All right, Shampoo. I, I love her face, though. She's shocked to be fight fighting you. Shampoo is more or less the Chun-Li of this game. She's incredibly fast, incredibly versatile, has a double jump, wall kick, and probably have, has the only aerial attack. But yeah, she is a, she is a, she is a beast. But given she is canonically one of the best fighters in the series, that's okay, too. I know you, Shampoo. You have to close it on me. Well, I don't. Ha! Of course, there's also that running joke of her always saying, ah, yeah. And she's down. I guess her hair color is a little too dark, too, but again, that's probably just the color palette. Oh, I made her cry, too. Shame on me. Shampoo is probably my second favorite character in this, even though she's a kind of a bloodthirsty maniac at times. There we go. Actually, did not mean to do that, but that's okay. Ooh, I thought she got me. Wow! She had what a third of her damn th third of her health left. That was quick. <laughs> she has the best lost face too so far. All right, Hidako Sensei. She can be problematic at times, but uh, she she's kind of the stance fighter of this. So, well, Wilds of Africa. Because if you know if you know her lore, she can transform between a child and an adult, basically by sucking people's energy. So she can transform between the two in this game and has different sets of moves. So like like so. Yeah, she's probably one of the one of the only characters canonically to ever beat Ranma, mainly because he gave up. To what he had to do in order to uh, remove her powers was so complex and so painful. He just decided, screw it, I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> but she also has two lost poses based on her form, so I'll try and beat her while she's still a child. Wow, that <laughs> came out wrong. <laughs> Oh! Oh! Uh, that, that, hey, that was the Mikuru beam from <laughs> Suzumi Yep, yeah, that's uh, that, that's still a decent, uh, still a decent anti-air. Now she cannot stay in adult form permanently. If she's uh, there we go. Counter. Up, oh, not quite. Get back in there. There we go. No, she was still an adult and taking that loss. She does try to transform fairly often. We'll we'll see it sooner or later. 
And, yep, she has the same portrait no matter what. Alright, we're getting close to the end here, so we got Ryoga. Now, Ryoga is a lot like Ranma in that he can be incredibly easy to break the game with. Because they have a lot of similar special moves. Try and uh, bait him. Oh, I had the priority. Ow. I was trying to grab him. The game keeps doing that. Now that move right there is uh, basically one of Ryoga's running gags because he's always he's getting lost and brings souvenirs home from wherever he's going around. So that giant, uh, giant raccoon doll was one of them. All right, two hit combo and down. So we're definitely in the, the <laughs> it looks like the Arctic region here. Uh, what kind of ingredients are we ha do we have to get for this beckoning cat, anyhow? <laughs> oh, jump right into that. My fault. I did not mean to do that, but I still knocked him away. Yep, it, as you can see, he's got his own projectile, which is... Well, basically, uh, Ryoga had it first. Then Rama found his own version to channel a different emotion into. And I pushed the wrong button, meant to taunt. Counter that. Do that again. Counter that. Finish this. Oh, nope, I broke out of the taunt. There we go. There, double hit. Finish that in style. Well, that's a little translation for... I, I think that's the Shishi Hoko Yep. So, uh, if, it, if he's saying you have to defeat my Dragon Punch to stand a chance for playing the wrong game. <laughs> However, we're not done yet. <laughs> You've gotten into a lot of trouble. Saves me the time of fighting the ingredients myself. That recipe has belonged to the Must Dynasty from the start. If you want it, you'll have to take it from me. If by some chance you win, I'll forgive you for laying your filthy hands on our treasure. Now, fully savor the power of the heir to the throne. The one descended from dragons and able to manipulate key. So, the final boss of this game, Herb. Or Hab. Basically, the arc villain of the Musk arc from the manga. And the one who Rama learned to develop the Hiryu Koren Don against. Always the final boss of this, unless you're playing as him. I will showcase how to play as him in due time. And, yep, we are just basically in the ruins of Greece. Little old, old Parthenon. Yep, uh, Herb is your typical final boss. He has good anti-air, good projectile, can cover the screen. However, still not too bad if you can uh, if you can bait him into, into hitting your counters. One of the few characters out there who, even though Rama wanted to kill him, still showed him mercy at the end. And also, very similar to Rama, and they have the same curse. So they're a lot more alike than they want to admit. Yep. A good counter on his part. Yep, he's got he's got good range. Fortunately, I got the kind of got the two hit counter. Got that. Good. Don't let him counter that. Yep, plenty of projectiles. He's still he's still easier than the final boss in PS1 Fighter. I will say that right now. If you've, you've never seen projectiles spam until you fought her. Fortunately, in that game, blocking projectiles does not at, uh, does not give you scratch damage. Okay, booyah, we win. So a good challenge, but could be worse. Rama completes the treasure based on the recipe. It's a cat! I completely forgot! Ah, stay away! You insist, meow. The beckoning cat leaves. The end. Yeah, it's Rama one half. Nobody gets a happy ending in this. Later!